On today's episode, we're going to take a look at some of the five top earnings that happened this past week. So let's get started. So the top five companies that we're going to take a look at today are AMD, Southwest, Facebook, Amazon, and Tesla. All of these companies have had some crazy earnings this past week. So we're just going to do a quick overview of what happened during their earnings. And if you guys want to learn more about each of these companies, I have actually done a full video on each of them. So free for you to check them out. And before we begin, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up and the bell. It helps the small channel out so much and I appreciate all the support that I'm getting from you guys. So thank you. All right. So the first company we're going to take a look at is one of my favorites, and that is AMD. So AMD reported on Tuesday. And we're going to take a look at its results in a bit. But pretty much, let's just compare how the whole week ended up for AMD. So this company started about 57.43 and compared to where it ended now this company actually dropped about 13 percent and that's actually pretty crazy it's about almost five percent today but the overall market was down today so this might actually give some buying opportunities i'll probably take the weekend to see what companies are out there right now that have taken a nice drop just this past week and see where if we have any extra buying opportunities but yeah, AMD is down about 13% for the week. And let's take a look at its results. So earning results for, uh, for AMD were the following. Quarter one, non-gap earnings per share of 18 cents. And that was pretty much in line, which was what was expected. Gap earnings per share of 14 cents was also in line for the company. Finally, revenue was $1.8 billion. And that was 40.9% higher than same time last year. And that, that shows this growth of this company. That was pretty much in line with what expectations, what, what analysts were expecting for this company. All right, so AMD's revenue is made up of two different sectors. First is computing and graphics. And this revenue grew by 73% year to year and is down 13% quarter to quarter. If you guys know, I'm, I'm a big fan of semiconductor companies, not just AMD of semiconductor companies. And one of these, the, there are certain companies that I like to compare year to year, and there are certain companies that I like to pair, compare quarter to quarter. Semiconductor companies are ones that I enjoy, I, I prefer looking at year to year growth. So seeing that 13% year to year growth is pretty good. Out of that, how much did I say total revenue was? This company collected $1.8 billion. Out of that $1.8 billion, $1.44 billion came from, from computing and graphics. So a huge portion, almost over close to 75% probably, came from this segment. And this segment is pretty much just the, the CPUs and the GPUs that go into your everyday computers, the ones that go into your laptops. If you buy an individual CPU or GPU from the company, that's where this comes from. The second portion of this company is enterprise embedded and semi-custom. So this made up the other, what, $300 million, $348 million came from here. And what is this? So what is enterprise embedded and semi-custom? And this is the one I'm actually pretty bullish on AMD about. This is the segment, even though it makes up such a small portion of the revenue, this is the one just in any semiconductor, this is the portion I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident. This enterprise embedded in semi-customs are the chips that go into big servers that are data center servers, the clouding servers. So this is something that's continuing, the, the cloud server and the data centers are something that's continuing to grow. And any, comp any company that's providing, that's providing items for that, I am pretty bullish on. And this is where this sector goes. Another part of this sector is um, the chips that go into the video game system. Right now, the video game system is on a slowdown because the new systems are not coming out till the end of this year. So at the moment, there is a drop in there. But, but I do believe as Microsoft and Sony start to order the chips for their new PlayStation and the new Xbox, we are going to see an increase of this as well as an increase of their server chips as well. Quarter one gross margins for this company was 46% compared to the same time last year, 41%. That is actually pretty good. I love to see gross margins increase and to see it increase by 500 basis points. That is pretty amazing. One of the main reasons that people say this company was down was because AMD was is one of the first few companies to actually provide a guidance for, for quarter two. And if you guys know quarter two is going to be the one that's going to be the most affected by the coronavirus because quarter one ended in march late march united states shutdown began in mid-march 
So quarter two is going to include full April, which was pretty much a wash. That month pretty much didn't happen. And then it's going to include May as well. And May right now, even though it's the first day of May, we can see that certain places are probably not going to be open for the next 15 days. But they give a guidance that they're going to see about $1.85 billion in revenue. But the expe expectation was to be 1.9. So that drove the company um, stock price down. AMD also sees a physical year of 20 revenue growth of 20 to 30 percent compared to the physical year of 2019. So that's some crazy growth for this company. All right. So next, the only thing I wanted to take a look at is just a quick valuation look of this company. I like to look at forward PE ratio two years from now. So for December 2021, this company is expected to make a dollar and 53 cents. This actually gives a forward PE ratio of 32.71. To be honest, AMD is a growing company with a great balance sheet, so a 32.71 is not that outrageous in my opinion. I would honestly prefer somewhere in the mid-20s. For a tech growing company, what I would feel comfortable, again, this is probably different for every investor, and I think that's the great part about it. Just because for me, it might seem like a good investment, to others, it might not, and the opposite. To others, it might seem like an amazing investment, and to me, it wouldn't. And it just depends on the plan you run. So right now for AMD, for technologies, growth companies, I am happy with the 25 forward PE ratio, but AMD also has a great balance sheet and the growth is a little bit bigger than most big companies. So even a 32 forward PE ratio isn't that crazy for me in valuation. It might be a teeny tiny bit overpriced, but nothing that overly priced where I would, sh I would shine away from it. Next, we're going to take a look at Southwest and Southwest have had, has had its bumps up and bump, bumps down this week. It started the week at about $29.79 and looking at it right now, this company is down only 1.8% from where it started this week. And let's just take a look at the full six month of this company. This company has dropped about 50% from its total valuation just two months ago. And one thing I am I'm a big fan of Southwest and Delta because those are the two airlines with the biggest, with the best balance sheet. Southwest is the one with, Southwest is the number one balance sheet, in my opinion, out of all the airlines. And that's why we haven't seen that big of a drop compared to other airlines. Some airlines have dropped over 60, 70%, where um, Southwest has only dropped 70%. So let's take a look at their earnings results. This company, I think was also on Tuesday, was on the 28th. Yes, was also on Tuesday. Their quarter one non-GAAP earnings per share were 15 cents, which actually ended up beating by 12 cents. So analysts were expecting a bigger drop. Revenue for this company was $4.23 billion, which was down 18% compared to the same time last year. But remember, like I mentioned, this timeline only takes place two weeks of coronavirus here in the United States, where quarter two is going to be a bigger impact for the airline industries, where they're seeing almost almost close to zero volume in traffic. So in some great news, just this past April 29th, this company announced a two billion of notes in two different trenches. First is doing 750 million at 4.75%, which I think is actually pretty cheap. And these notes are not going to be due till 2023. And then it has a 1.25 um, billion notes of a 5.25%. Again, a little bit expensive, but not as high. We have seen like CCL take out some some notes at about 10, 10%, I think. So airlines are doing a little bit better, and especially it doesn't it doesn't hurt. That Southwest has such a great balance sheet, so that helps them get lower interest. And these notes are not due till 2025, so these are pretty, pretty long term notes. So, this company, I'm sure, will be able to pay them. And again, this continues to build that cash, that cash on this company. And I'm actually getting a little bit more bullish on Southwest right now after reading this. The next article I want to talk about is there has been a bit of a change through airlines right now. Three of the four major airlines right now are requiring facial masks on flights. Unfortunately, Southwest is the only one out of those fours not yet recommending it. And that to me was a little down on Southwest. I, I was hoping they would be they would be the front runners here. But JetBlue was the one that started this and the other two started to follow. And I'm sure Southwest is going to end up doing the same as well. Now, let's take a look at this company's forward P.E. ratio. This company for December 2021, so two years from now, is expected to make $2.43. With $2.43 at the current price of 29.23 divided by $2.43, gives this a company a forward PE ratio of 12. 
12 uh, i remember 12 is not that bad i think for airlines the average was somewhere around 14 or 15 so let's do that 2.43 times 15 and it gives us somewhere about 36 for um a 36 price so anything below that i think is actually pretty cheap and like i said southwest is one of my favorite airlines because of that great balance sheet that it has all right so next we're going to take a look at facebook and facebook reported earnings on wednesday i believe let's see april 29th so yes on wednesday they reported earnings and for the week this company is up about five percent um, so this this company did provide some nice results and investors are are a little were are a little less worried than initially intended so two companies i think google went this week too but i'm not talking about them but two companies google and facebook most of their revenue comes from advertisement For, uh, facebook i think over 90 percent of the revenue actually comes from advertisement so that's why this company actually saw a big drop from february so compared to february to to the biggest drop it lost about one third of its value um right now this company in compared to february is still a bit low it's still about seven percent down but it does seem like investors think that they were overreacting and it's driving the stock price back up so facebook's results were the following quarter one gap earnings per share were a dollar and 71 cents would actually beat it beat by only one penny though revenue was 17.74 billion dollars and that's up 17.6 percent compared to a year ago and i think that's actually pretty impressive especially during the times we're seeing so some of the things facebook saw obviously if you guys have seen snapchat and like spotify and netflix there has been a huge demand in daily active users and that's no different for facebook facebook saw a huge a huge increase in daily active users in monthly active users in family monthly active users as well the next thing that they talk about is they saw a significant reduction in demand for advertisement as well as related decline in pricing of their ads and this was only over the the final weeks of the quarter but during their earnings call this company actually said that on during the first few weeks of april this company actually started going back to normal next this company ended with 60.3 billion dollars of liquid liquidable cash even though this company had just invested money in uh, uh in this company in india which i is actually a pretty cool company and they also had to pay about five billion dollars in ftc settlements so facebook is actually one of those companies with a really great balance sheet and the only other one that i feel is contending with the number one balance sheet is google i think google's balance sheet is one of the best balance sheets i have ever seen if you guys actually know another one let me know in the comments and i want to check that company out so now let's take a look at facebook facebook for 2021 is expected to make nine dollars and 99 95 cents so that actually gives this company a forward pe ratio of 20.33 for a tech company with such a great balance sheet i still think i'm i'm still a big fan of facebook um and i am liking what they're doing i do like the money they have the, um, the balance sheet they have so that's one of the greatest thing i think that facebook has to offer is that balance sheet that would allow them to continue to buy different companies to continue to grow in different aspects and also facebook even though facebook as a whole might have seen decrease there's a huge demand in instagram right now and a huge demand in in whatsapp right now where a lot of people use these applications and are using them more now next we're going to take a look on amazon and amazon for the week it's down about 6.45 percent there was actually someone in my comments that was like sure amazon at 2400 that guy was a genius i wish i would have listened to him i honestly can't i forget who it was but if you're here watching this tell me the next trade just kidding um but anyways this company reported earnings this past thursday i believe they reported the 30th which was the 30th was thursday yes yesterday they just reported thursday and amazon is one of those few companies that are actually up compared to february 20th um so this company is up about six percent from where it was in february 20th which is when pretty much all this started to happen this company did see a small decline when everything started happening and not just a small it actually lost about um 22 percent of its value in just a week so now let's take a look at earnings earnings for this company um quarter one were five uh, earnings per share were five dollars and one cents and it actually missed by a dollar and ten cents and we're going to take a look one of the main reasons it lost is this company is actually using most of its money um to improve itself and making sure its employees are safe revenue for the quarter was 75.5 billion dollars 
which made up which was up 26.5 percent compared to the same time last year and they actually beat expectations by 1.4 billion dollars that's a lot of money that it beat by so if you guys don't know amazon makes revenue out of three segments the first segment is north america north america is made 46 billion dollars out of that 75 so a huge portion comes from north america sales the other is international so international has made 19.1 billion sales so again it makes an uh it makes it's the second biggest segment and those two so north america and international sales make up about 65 billion dollars of that 75 that is ridiculous about about 80 percent of total revenue comes from those two but over i want to say over 60 percent of the total net income comes from aws so aws is the smallest revenue that comes from amazon it collects 10.2 billion dollars out of that 75 um but it actually makes the most money it has the best margins returns and i think and we're gonna see it makes three times more income than amazon's sales and i think that's actually pretty impressive and one of the biggest reasons i am bullish in amazon as a company is due to that aws so looking ahead amazon did provide some uh, um, some guidance for quarter two one thing that ended up scaring investors said that this company is going to use about four billion dollars on COVID 19 expenses they've used some money during for the quarter one but quarter two is the one taking the biggest impact and they actually share what they're going to use this four billion dollars with so obviously this four billion dollars is going to take a hit in the operating income for the company because they're going to be using it on expense they're going to end up using 300 million on virus testing they're also going to do include personal protective equipment for the um for employees they're going to enhance facility cleaning they're going to increase hiring they're going to increase they're high on a hiring french right now and one of the biggest reasons this company is on the hiring french which i think is pretty impressive is right now everybody is is trying is buying stuff from the e-commerce world so right now amazon is trying to take even more market shares from the original just going home or going to a store retail from the typical retail stores is trying to collect more of that segment and to do that this is the best time for it to go 110 percent so amazon understands that and that's what it's doing and that's why it's increasing its capacity in everything right now and it's going to be using more money for it but in the long term it believes it's going to be the best move and again i agree with amazon in there so even though i am bullish on amazon i'm not bullish on the stock price at the moment for december 2021 this company is expected to make non-gap earnings per share of 38 dollars and 12 cents this is a forward pe ratio of 65 65 is actually pretty high for my taste i would honestly prefer somewhere around the 45s for a big guy like this but a 65 forward pe ratio i feel like i can find a better investment elsewhere again this doesn't mean it is a bad investment now it just means to me i feel like my money can make more money in some other form of investments and finally the last company we're going to take a look at is tesla and tesla had had his crazy updates after earnings but after Elon tweeted some amazing stuff today, the company is actually down. So for the for the five day for the week, this company is down about five percent. But look, this company peaked at 855, and from there, it's already down close to 20 percent. And why did it drop this much? So there's a few things that happened today, um, and we're going to talk about them in a bit. So first, let's take a look at earnings per shares results. Earnings results for this company. For quarter one, non cap earnings per share, this company did a dollar and twenty four cents, which actually beat by a dollar forty five cents. So it did a lot better than what was expected. A lot, a lot better. Gap earnings per share were nine cents, which beat by a dollar and seventy five cents. To me, it's actually pretty crazy that had, that analysts were that wrong for this company. Revenue for this company was five point nine nine billion, and it was up thirty two percent compared to the same time last year. Tesla said that this quarter it produced 102,000 102, vehicles and delivered about 88,000 of those vehicles to um, and marked its best quarter one ever. The margins for this company actually increased as well. Automotive gross margins increased to 25.5% versus 22.5% just a quarter ago. And some of the reasons they say the margins increased are the following. First, they just have now the facility in Shanghai, which has lower labor costs. So that has helped out with, with the margins. The second thing is they just 
um, the production for the Model Y car was actually doing pretty good and it was the first car that provided profits on its first quarter being built so that helped out and finally they Amazon in Tesla's earnings transcript and I like I said I did a video about them they showed how they're improving just on the way they make cars for example for the model 3 to make the, the the rear bottom of the car took 70 metal pieces for the model 3 for the newer model y it only takes two metal pieces and that costs that drops the cost of making a car dramatically because you're saving time from that labor work so most of the stuff here i talked about it talks about the shanghai factory which i mentioned the model y um this company still had an operating free cash flow of about 895 uh loss in cash flow so it's still burning a bit of cash but this company actually has a, a very good um, amount of liquidable cash that it says can it'll be able to to survive any any moment any crazy things that happen in the upcoming future so it had about eight billion dollars in cash and very low in debt at the moment tesla isn't issuing any near-term guidance due to the pandemic and it actually makes sense in my opinion next we're going to see why this big drop happened so today early morning test um elon musk actually tweeted tesla stock price is too high in my opinion and when he tweeted that this dropped about seven percent and then wall street actually came in contact supposedly this is what the article says wall street journal actually came in contact with musk because a lot of people were speculating that he was hacked but musk was saying that he wasn't joking on his tweet and his tweets weren't vetted before he posted them so tesla ended the day even more after that update and another reason this company is down is there is this investment firm that is actually shorting tesla and they believe some form of sketchiness is happening in the company's financial statements and they ask some crazy questions that again i talk about in my video um, but they actually kind of made sense in my opinion uh, so that actually made the stock price drop down a bit but at the moment right there is no real evidence of any manipulation happening in the company's financial statement all right so next let's take a valuation for tesla for december 2021 this company is expected to make non-gap earnings per share of 12 dollars 24 this actually gives a forward pe ratio of 57.32 57.32 is actually i mean it's cheaper in theory than amazon and I, I honestly i feel like i'm a little bit more bullish in the company wise of tesla than i am of amazon but again to me this price is a little bit too high for my taste so i'm not i'm definitely not getting into this company at its current price hopefully elon maybe might tweet some more and might give us a, a better buying opportunity so i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode let me know what you think make sure to post on the comments make sure to subscribe and hit the thumbs up i appreciate it guys have a good night and see you next time